shake ready, we shake ready. All right. Check, check. Can you hear me? Check, yeah. All right, bro. <laughs> Welcome to the first episode. Yeah. Thank you for coming up. Appreciated it, man. I just, I think I asked you when, uh, two days ago. Uh. Uh, two days, uh, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much of a brother you are, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. You comfortable? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to go deep into introducing who you are. I'm assuming people watching this already kind of know who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not sure also how many times have you already explained. Uh, but I think when people look at the title, right away they're going <laughs> to like, yo, is this guy really a dato? Ah? No. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Dre is not a doctor. You, My you, man. You, you, <laughs> shit, that's money right there. Boom. There you go. But um, yeah, I just wanted to make that like, just clear lot like, if you're not a doctor. Uh, you can you can name yourself whatever you want. Like you said, Dr. Dre is not a doctor. Mm. So, but why that though? Why not like other Tan Sri ke? I don't know. Yes, there's quite a lot of Liu and Yang in the game. So I go right. with Dato. And Tan Sri is a bit, you know, a bit far. La. Right, 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 right. <laughs> true, true. Too far fetched. Dude, by the way, I think your mic needs to go closer a closer. bit. Just a bit. Yeah, that would right. be, be perfect. All right. So you're not a dato. Okay, cool. Um, welcome to the show. Um, through this show, what I hope we can get out of this show from this platform is to share stories. Yeah. Uh, uh, mainly the struggles, lah, right? I think we put up a lot of our good times on Instagram. So a lot of people can see that already. But what they don't see is what happens behind Instagram or the videos that you see. So we hope today, through your stories, we get to inspire more people. Mm. Uh, and also hope that more people get to know you better. All right, all right. Right? Can do. Yeah. So, um, I want to do a little throwback. A little throwback. Lah. Okay. Do you remember when we first met? Or not? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're like, back then I was like, and. I kind of do events for hip hop show, especially like Chinese hip hop show. And I kind of reach out to you, asking you to be the sponsor. Really? Oh shit. You remember the wrong story, is it? Oh. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Well, this but, is awkward. But, no, no, this is interesting. Um, really? Wait, let me recall. Because I remember something else. I remember something else. But go on. Uh, what event was that? Uh, the Ching Yao show. Lah. Right, 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 uh -huh. right. They're it out. Right, right, right. My bad, my bad, my bad. We, we did the show, what? I came for the show. Yeah. In Pavilion. It's in like Sunway, eh? Cocoon. Yeah, Cocoon or some shit. La. It's like... Wait, how many Chink It Out, chink it out was there? There's like one. Sh there's like one only. How, how about the one in Pavilion with B and all that? That one was Chink It Out too, right? That one yeah. was there, right? Were you there? Yeah, I'm not there. No, the one we had like um, Tamil rappers as well and I think some Malay rappers as well. No, nah, that one I, I wasn't there. Wait, because I'm... Sorry? Yes. Were you there? Yeah, I'm there. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's dope. But you were not there. I'm not there. But I, were you the founder of Chink It Out or not? Because nah. I got a bit uh, B confused. B is the founder. B, uh, right, B right, founder. right, right. And like somehow... Because I want to be like, at that time, I still do know like, I have the ability to make music and create music, but I want to be part of, you know, hip hop. And right. I want to be part of like Mandarin Chinese hip hop. Okay. And I kind of meet Abi at an event, like raising the bar back then. Then like somehow like, that's that's how I get started with Ching It Out. I don't really write songs. So I just like, hey, I can do some events and just, you know, right. showcase the talents and all that. Right, how old were you during that time? Yo, fuck. I think like 16, eight, no, I think 17, 18, 24. Impossible. Well, how? 24. Franco. By the way, guys, for you guys who are watching who don't know who's behind the camera, it's Franco. <laughs> Franco is a longtime friend of Mo and also uh, his producer. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, we're trying to refresh our memories. Wait, I got into Ching It Out when I was 24. Impossible. Because like 24, I was read in Taiwan. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, <laughs> I think the timeline a bit okay. confused because you you know we got so many things going on. Ah. Right, 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 right. It's been a journey, la. It's been a journey, right. right. What else did you do at the time? Because now I'm I'm trying I'm I'm quite like confused right now. Like, whoa, wait, there's this guy who came up to the store to see me. Was it you? Did you do anything else beside the event? Yeah, I did came up and like link up with you, lah. But so I didn't do the show, right? I didn't. But you approached me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, shit. And you sponsor like tons of caps, lah. Oh shit, that's so cool, <laughs> dude. I'm so sorry, guys. I mean, like this is this is great for the I mean for the people who's watching because it's uh, I mean so much happened. Uh, again, ten anniversary, can it's been ten years. So, I try my best to help as much as I can. Uh, when people re approach me, yeah. whether if it's small events, big events, they need. I mean, there's only like few events we sponsored money but for most we give products because that's the least we can do to sort of show support so i'm glad we, we did sponsor a lot of caps did we a lot okay. you give you give me like i think around 30 caps oh that's a lot eh? i was like wow. you always expecting Dude, this is like this is cap city or negative at that time you mix and match bro okay i mix like, and match. I, I remember you sponsored some of like the marvel's cap also right okay then it should be cap city lah yeah. It yeah, should be but I also like negative shirt. Also, you also hentam everything. You hentam inside. I was like, wow, so many. Right, that's <laughs> dope. So you were helping B man out. Yeah, I was hoping to be the person behind the scene in Ching out who mm. does shows and like you know push the talents out. Mm. But yeah, like all the rappers kind of you know got their things going on and Ching out kind of dies off already lah. Right. Yeah. How many Chingira? I think two only la, so far after that one that you said and then the one in Pavilion and then ah. it, it, it kind of stopped, la, right? Yeah, it kind of stopped already. Ah, <laughs> shit. It'd be like that, man. It'd be like Do you that. think at that time the Chinese rap scene was bigger or now? Now it's definitely bigger. But Now it's definitely bigger. But a lot of people didn't realize that in order to get to now, you need to like save enough bullet, you know. You, mm. you you don't get to slack and say like I'm quitting this for a while. You need to be so fucking ready when the game is here. Mm. You need to be able to back up the money, like all the other things as well, lah. So that you know, yeah, that's why I'm like a lot of people keep saying, telling me like, ah, yeah, you you making Chinese rap music right now. That's why lah. That's why you lucky you in this like you know this era when like people started li started to listen to Chinese rap and all that. It was like yo. Shut the fuck up la. I've been doing this like mm. way back then. That's why when the opportunity presents, I'm able to right. get it. La. Grab it mm. at the right timing. Right. I think at that time, really, there was just so handful of them. I think Manhand was probably the one group that really made it yeah. big. Right. Other than that, I mean, there was a few or so, la, but then like really didn't last long. La. Yeah. I guess I know why, la, but... But I also know that we in the same environment. So mm. basically it's about way of hustle only. La. Some people can last, some people cannot. Yeah. Like, yeah. But they if they got their own thing going on, like that's good for them. La. Also, yeah. like everybody has their own path and all that. Right. right. <laughs> okay, other than that, what else did you do? Because in my memory, there's still this other memory that we have not talked about. Uh, did you did you make a cap? Yeah. <laughs> right yo oh my god yo i was so yo. worried dude guys i was so worried like i got the wrong guy you know why because i'm about to tell you the story but but yo oh man <laughs> thank god you you just reassured me that my memory was right uh tell them bro tell them tell them yo because you know uh, like to be part of like back then when i was younger uh, to be part of hip-hop culture yeah i love rap since mm. like when I first started to know like about hip hop, I was right. like, yo, I want to be a rapper. Mm. But you know, la, Chinese family, they're like, yeah. But I'm like, cannot la, cannot la, can. cannot. Yeah. And at the time when you tell your parents you want to be a rapper, <laughs> la. <laughs> <laughs> so you yeah. confirm crazy. Yeah, right. yeah, la. So like, one of it is like, the, the person who's part behind the scene. Another one, I was like thinking of getting into the streetwear game as well. Right, right. And I was there with one of my friends and at that time you know the a lot of streetwear starting doing things that you know it's like how to say fun one uh? fun, fun one. one what's fun one 
It's like they're using like the similar logo. Oh, okay. Like a parody? Uh, parody. Uh, off? Uh, right. that, that thing was like fucking big back then. So to be honest, you don't need to have like super AI or hmm. skills for that. Straight you just up. like yeah. flip something. Yeah. And that time, I think we, my friend did flip a Crooks and Castle mm. logo. Yeah. Okay, okay. And okay. it was like, he told me that this thing would work. I was like, I, I'm, I'm not like a super pro guy in design but if yeah. like, let's give it a try yeah and we actually yo fuck man we actually spend quite some money on that cap also because mm. the manufacturer is like i don't know if you know d9 uh. d9 yeah yeah we got our cap from them so what fucking expensive. oh shit the what do you mean they made it yeah they made it man <laughs> oh dude how did you get them though like online Okay, so you just reached out, yeah, can you make caps like, for us? Yeah. And then they actually took the order. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. They did make custom caps. Uh, so like we just reached out and like, yeah, everything's just like okay. that. Uh. Then after they released the cap, then I feel like my friend is like more onto the business side of your person. So okay. he was like, yo, the money, he's not really like into the culture. He's just like, okay. he likes it, but he's not into it. You know, okay. and it's like, he feels that the money is like coming back quite slow. Let's be honest, uh, quite yeah, slow. Straight. Then he was like, nah, he's like, stop it. Uh, then I was like, all right. I I feel like this experience is kind of good also because uh, before I start rapping, uh, I keep telling myself like, I cannot do one, like, you cannot do this one. That's why I keep trying like stupid jobs. I study mass comm. I become like a, a producer for a movie. Hmm. Like producer as in the one who go and tap out some fun for the actors to eat and all that. Straight. I okay. become a new caster in Siji, which is like one charity organization, a big one. La. Right. Then I become a like journalist or so. I hmm. write write news and all that. Wow. And I didn't know about that. <laughs> I basically do everything in the mass comm category, you know. Okay. Cause cause you know, like I was like hoping to find a job that I can endure or bear with for my eternal life. So, right. so I was like, yo, fuck lah. I'm going to like try every fucking thing lah. And it's like kind of scary, you know, when you try every fucking thing and <laughs> yo, shit doesn't <laughs> work out at all, man. Like everything yeah. I do, like for one month, two months, I was like, ah, mm. ah, ah, I don't want. Mm. Then I did work at, you know, retail retail store as well. I work at Levi's in Queens Bay Mall. Oh, Internet, shit. And I got fired also. Then I used to from work. Levi's. Yeah, I get fired from Levi's. Wow, what a full circle, right? Because you, you, you would, uh, <laughs> dude, you just joined the Levi's contest and like, yeah, wow, yeah. Okay. So like, all these jobs doesn't work out, and I try to start something, and it also doesn't work out, which means that, and I also try to apply to be a teacher, hmm. and it also doesn't work out. Teacher, teach what? <laughs> Because I got like pretty good results in my BM, BI, and BC. Damn, It's like son. A plus straight. And I was like, yo, fuck. I might be able to be a teacher. And teacher got a lot of free time, right? Right, right, right. I was right. like, yo, I get to buy laptop at a cheaper rate. And, and <laughs> still can, you know. <laughs> the perks of being a teacher. Uh, go out and, you know, watch shows and all that. I mean, th at that time, I was so fucking certain that, yo, this is my life. Right, this is it. And Maktab Pengguruan, like the, the institution where you apply to be a teacher, they rejected me. Because hmm. my kelakua, kelakuan is D. And, okay. and yeah, so I was like, yo, there goes my chance of being a government Te teacher. I was right. like, yo, fuck. Was wow, like, that's so crazy. You wanted to be a teacher <laughs> at one point. Wow. Yeah, I was so mindset on this. I was like, yo, let's, let's be a teacher. Yeah, let's get it. And after that, after I got rejected, I start, I start my own tuition class, bro. Okay. I opened up like three to four class. I was making a few K wow. per month at that age, which is like 18, 17, something like that. I was like, Where yeah. was this tuition class? Like I actually ran from my friends. Like her like she got a her family runs runs a you know Kadai Runjit. Okay. And she also teach herself. Okay. And I ran some classes from her. Okay. And I also got some private tuition one on one. Wow. And yeah, at all together I was like Mm, nice how money. how old were the students? What students? Uh, uh, what SPM. grade? SPM. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Imagine the SPM student now know you know that more <laughs> and like see the whole difference will be like, dude, that's my teacher, bro. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> but wow. Okay. Yeah. So I basically do anything that I think I will like. Okay. And ended up you know wasting my time lah. But I think it's 
I, I mean, now you look back, it's not really waste Risa, because la. you you get to taste it first. Uh, taste, try everything, like, basically. Yeah. Try yeah. everything. Then I was, okay, nothing else to try already. Then <laughs> be, I a start, rapper, <laughs> be a rapper. Be a rapper. I start doing rap. And I was like, yo, this shit is tough. Then I start learning about how to, you know, market your music and all that. Right. To be honest, being a rapper and like making music as a living is like way tougher than all my previous fucking jobs. Right. But and that shows how much you love rap and music because, yeah. you know, those kind of paid you. Um, those also hard, but this one also hard, struggle, but at least this one you love it. Yeah. So luckily then like started rapping, put out some songs, I get to perform. And mm. like my first performance... Is in actually is in Malaysia, I think. Like mm. the first one, I don't really have any songs came out yet. Yeah. Way before RTB is, I think it's like the Ching Yao double core. They mm. they disband lah. Right, right. Then right. like they, that's like a goodbye show or some shit lah. I just right. go up and perform a bit or so. Right. But yeah. what did you perform though? You had no songs at that time. Like I got some like couple songs that I didn't really record or so okay. like, I just okay. like go up and like hey, throw up a bit and just rap. <laughs> right, right. Okay. And yeah, after that. I don't know lah. Somehow I get get to perform, and some people sh like fuck with my stage presence and also crowd control ability. Mm. And I I become a party MC, and I <laughs> right. It's, it's like damn weird lah. Then like party MC pays good, like yeah, you good. also know lah. Yeah, <laughs> especially Pretty good. overseas, you know. Yeah, do they? Because that one, I don't know whether they pay good or not. Because like there's something like this uh, It's I'm not sure it's their way of working, but I sense it's like this, uh, cause most of the club in China, mm. like they don't want to pay a lot for a foreigner. I mean, like you know, the blue eyes or like white white people, uh, They want to pay, they don't want to pay a lot for that, right. and they also don't want to hire their own people, cause you know they do, can't really speak fluent English and all that. Straight. And so in the middle, uh, like mm. Malaysian and Singapore, we are in the middle. Hey, right. We can speak Chinese also, so there there won't be you know trouble in communication and all that we can right. work well and we got that foreigner not to say really foreigner yeah, but yeah, foreigner yeah. appearance so yeah. they fuck with that also yeah so i guess i guess that's that's it lah. like china side and i became a resident mc in taiwan in taipei for like for like two one years or two years like that lah. like mm. and in between i came back to malaysia and do shows and all that that's just how i try to still try to you know try to make music and all that Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, now before we dive deeper into uh, your experience in Taiwan, um, I want to go back, uh, back to where we met. <laughs> All right. Was, okay, so I want to go back to where we met. So when you came up to meet me for your cap, mm. was that the first time we met? I just wanted to be sure. That cap, yo, fuck! I actually do know which one came first already. Because Chinke I didn't meet you since I didn't do the show. I assumed that we did not. Eh, we but I passed you the caps. You passed me the oh, caps. shit. Where did I pass, pass you the caps? Oh, fuck. Cannot not remember. This shop, la. Not, not this, this shop. shop not this shop. Okay. But anyway, um, because I think I, I really want to talk about, I thought that was the first time we met. And I want to talk about the experience because I think a lot of people should know. I'm not sure if you... <laughs> you are you know proud or embarrassed but i think you know it's something that i felt at that point so what happened was i think i got a text from you or a call saying that uh -huh. you have this cap and it's called loud and proud yeah and i was already seeing it on facebook because at that time streetwear was so small so whoever come up with one item also you know people share and you kind of see it so when you told me that you have this brand or cap that is loud and proud, only one design, I remember. Yeah. And it was leopard print, I think. <laughs> yeah, shit, leopard shit, print, leopard guys. Print. <laughs> Dude. But yo, um, so I said, okay, um, you have these caps, you want to put it up to the store? I said, sure. And then you wanted to meet me, we set a time, and then you came. You came with a fucking luggage bag. Do you remember that? Yo, yeah. Yeah. Yo, it's so crazy because <laughs> what I'm about to tell you guys right now is that uh, me and Mo, we we never we never really had this chance to really chit chat. Yeah. Uh, why is because from my memory, which my memory quite bad lah. First, I disclaimer first, okay. So you came up with the luggage bag. You you I think you took a bus or some shit like that. I was very very like yeah, legit man. Like, right. Because back then, I came to KL. KL was like you know. 
a new place to me, you know. Everything mm. is like fresh and mm. adventures in KL. Mm. Like I usually came by bus and yeah. I just take bus to go and meet people and all right. that. Right. And usually I stay at Franco's place. My man. Like back then when I still do know him that well, mm. I stay in some like cheap ass hotel, you know. Mm. Like the 30 bucks hotel and all that. Because like, yeah, it sounds kind of weird because like, I do need to go through that one, you know. <laughs> but like back then, I don't know why. I was just like, yo, I just... Yeah, trying to you get just, into the KL vibe, you know. Just fucking langa first. Uh. Langa first. And right. yeah, back then, yeah, what you say is quite true. Like, usually I meet people that there was there were always a luggage bag with me. Yo, that's so that shit's so crazy, guys. Because you know why? Because like after 12, you're gonna check out. And like some mm. sometimes you meet up with people, it's like confirm, Yo, la. I remember you, I think you were late. Um, and I was like, yo, where's this guy? <laughs> and then when he came up with the luggage bag and he was sweating and he said he took a bus and you know he was exhausted and I was just like yo all that like I don't I'm not even mad anymore you know what I mean and then you would just uh, you know you're a bit kalam kabut maybe you're nervous or what then you open your bag it's like bro I got this you know remember this brand I told you like this is the caps you know can I put it here for consignment and then like I was just like for all that hustle, all the hassle that you have to go through just to get here with the luggage bag, I was like, yo, I respect this guy. <laughs> and uh, I remember you gave me one cap. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I could tell at that time you were a bit reluctant. You're like, oh, yeah, anyway, this one for you, all, bro. <laughs> and and I, I understand that pain because, you know, when you start up, you every piece is manima yeah, to facts, make back. But, you know, you, you still gave me that cap because you felt like, you know, it's, it's, it's a form of respect and it's a form of saying thank you, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Definitely. So I took the caps, um, then you went off and then we started selling the caps. Uh, that was very early stage of Cap City. Mm. And I remember at that time, you, you told me you're going to go to Taiwan already. Yeah, I'm going Because after that, I was texting you about your caps, like whether if you still have more or, you know, sales report or some stuff like that. And then you said you're in Taiwan. And that's it, man. Um, and what happened was that, so, so that, that is as far as my memory goes, mm -hmm. that's it of like you and your caps. <laughs> yeah. And then like after two to three years um, from my staff, ex-staff, uh, she told me about, oh, have you heard of this guy called Dato Mo? <laughs> and I was like, who's this Dato Mo? Dato -er. And like, you know, the usual stuff, check you out. And then I saw one of your interview on YouTube. I'm not sure if it's, it was shot by RTB or not. And then I, dude, I swear to God, I didn't tell you this. I'm so happy that I'm saving this for the podcast because oh, I actually didn't know it was you, bro. Oh, fuck. Yeah. I, I thought you know all along. <laughs> dude, I'm so sorry, man, because I'm not on Facebook. Um, so I don't know what's happening. And of course, at that time, I think it was 2013, 2014, I was, I was on a roll. Uh, I was mm. opening this store. I was opening yeah. second store, third store. My mind was everywhere. I was still doing Club MC. Um, not to say it was an easy ride, it was a tough ride. So I, I have my fair share of struggles and whatever. So I, I'm sorry, I really <laughs> didn't know. And then here's the best part. So after I heard from my ex staff that, oh, that took more, okay. I hear him once, I see him twice on YouTube. And then uh, here and there, three, four times, uh, I think you called me when you wanted to come back to do your Planta tour. Yeah. And that was so funny, bro. Cause when you <laughs> called me, like, hey bro, more. Oh, I think you said more, yeah. not to more or something. And then I was like, yeah, yo, who is Mo? <laughs> yo, I was like, yo, who's this dude? Right? And I was like, yo, what's up, man? Because you sounded like you know me very well. And I was oh, just like, yo, shit. what's up, man? So um, you, you told me that you're coming back here for a, a show, a tour, yeah. a KL show, because you were doing a few shows here and there. So you said you would like me to perform for your Planta tour. And yeah. I was like, yo, okay, man, sure, man. I mean, at that time, I already recognized that you had like this movement going on. La. Like you were just a, a goer, a doer, you know. So I was like, okay, cool. And then the next thing you know, uh, my friend called me. Uh, my friend called me. I don't think you know her. I'm not sure. She called me and said, hey, Nigel, you know this guy, Dato Mo? I was like, why? What's up with Dato Mo again? Because like he just called me. It's like, oh, you know him, is it? Because... Did you know we are mutual friends on Facebook? Like me, you, and him. I was like, wait, <laughs> I am I am a friend with Datumo already on Facebook? 
say, yeah, his name is your Chinese name. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not sure. Are you comfortable? Yeah, Let, yes, yeah, yeah. You know, it was Wei. Tianwei. Tianwei. <laughs> it's like, Tianwei, yeah. The guy Tianwei. I was like, dude, my mind was fucking haywired. I was like, yo, I'm so confused. What's going on? I'm, the, I'm with this I'm this friend with Tianwei on my Facebook and Datu Mo called me and this guy is this guy ke? Oh, so... Fuck. Dude, oh man, that that's like my honest uh, sharing with you. Whoa. Oh my god, oh man, I was like, oh, so that guy's that guy, right? So what happened? I want to know. I I really don't know, guys. So I want to know. After you you left the meeting here, I think we were chatting. You you were in Taiwan. I was here. What happened? What was where the transition? I want to know the transition. How did you just because obviously your rap style, I must say, when you first started out, you know, you were, you know, you were hard. Like you were going hard, you were shouting, you were angry, you were going for that hard style, like that hard rap. So I was really like, okay, this guy has got something different to offer mm. to the rap game. So I want to know, how did that transition happen? Like, you mean, like music transition? Or? Yeah, music, like, oh. in generally, like, okay, maybe also together with... How do you like, okay, you know what? I want to call myself Dato Mo. <laughs> Mo means, uh, in English means devil, right? Mo, uh, Mo yeah, Kui, yeah. right? So, you know, how did you go to such a, such direction? Because like the reason I went to Taipei is because like back then Chinese hip hop is like huge in Taiwan. Mm. And like the underground scene is like, you know, booming and all that. I just went there. I just want to go there and see how okay. does this shit works only. And during that time there, I also come back to KL a lot of time, you know. I, I've been like talking to people. I've been trying to help people out. I've been trying to do shows and all that. But I see this mm. thing, la, they don't have the fire anymore. You mm. feel me? Yeah. Like there's no point like helping people who doesn't really help themselves. So, but I respect their hustle and what they contribute to the scene. La, but to be honest, it's not enough not to enough. build the scene up. Straight. So I was like, Yo, I'm gonna start helping people and start helping myself. Yourself. Because I, I know that's that's when if I want to be the person with a certain influence or a person who can, you know, push something forward, I need to, you know, it's better if I can be the one who does this rather than I help other people and you know, shit might does might won't work out. Because right. I spent like one year helping people and you know. Yeah, nothing really came nothing back. Nothing really came back. So yeah. I was like, I'm going to start help myself. And you know, if if people fuck with me, they're going to fuck with me. And I'm going to know people that go through the same shit. Yeah. And you know, like, it's like, in my mind, it's something like this, you know, it's like a game where 50 people are playing mm. and I do need to, you know, go and associate with people, go and be friends with people. I, mm. I know on the next level, there are going to be like 20 people left. Yeah. So I can like, and on the next level, there's going to be like 10 people left. So right. eventually people with the same hustle and same mentality will yeah, we'll meet and connect. We'll meet and connect. So that's the way I played it. So I just like keep on, keep on thinking on, keep on learning. Basically keep on learning. Because like, like when I dropped my first EP, I actually already know how to, you know, know how to carry myself in a way already. Okay. It's not like... And the I, first EP you dropped was when you were in KL or... In, in Penang. In, in Penang. That, that time I, I was like, you know, Taiwan side didn't really work out quite well because I, I think some some people like delay my payment and whatsoever. Yeah, I remember you told me that. Yeah, and I was like, yo, I don't have money around there. I was like, yo, come back Penang and just chill. Yeah. And that chill, I chill for one year. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, and that one year my producer was like, yo, bro, you're gonna go back to Taipei to finish your studies and you want to go back, you know, with no new songs, no new project. Mm. You're slacking, man. Like, like shout out to do some, man. It's like my first, also my day one. He was like, yo, you slacking, boy. And I was like, I, I'm going to do something. Mm. And the first EP was done in like two days. In two days. I was like going back and forth to tuition center to teach stuff. At that time, I was working for other people. Because wow. I was like so tired and exhausted and everything. Mm. Then my producer just, you know, just slapped me in the head. La. Like basically, la. then... I was like, yo, I'm going to do something. And mm. that time is the first time where I found a way to, you know, bring, be a Malaysian in a Chinese song. 
Because mm. back then I was so so fixated on how to get the rhymes, the yayun, the all yeah. that. And it all sounds so off in a way, you know. So I didn't right. know how to do it. I was like, you're so fucking stuck. I want to be a rapper. And like the first step is like, you know, know what you're doing, like your yeah. pen game and the way you your flow and everything. I was like, everything is like so much. I I can't really digest it. Mm. And when I got false, I was like, I'm so them pulan already. I just like yeah. stopped writing random shit. I was like, yo, fuck, man. It worked. It worked. Right. And yeah, that's how I I was like, yo, I, I'm gonna call this China, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because like, it, it doesn't sound like any other Chinese in other parts of the world as well. It's yeah. like a Malaysian Chinese thing. I was like, mm. it yeah. works. So yeah, it, it's original. La. It's original. It, yeah. It's it hits us, mm. the Chinas here. La. So that's that's when, yeah, the moment when I start stop helping out helping other people, I got more self more time for myself. Right. And I start to develop my own style in a very quick time. And also, you know, when you put you, when you sacrifice all the hours, uh, basically you can shortcut anything. Uh. Right. The time 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 frame will be like shorter uh, if right. you don't slack. So at that time I was like, keep learning, keep learning, keep learning, keep learning, yeah. keep learning. Put in the that. work. Yeah, keep putting work on uh. So in Tai during your time in Taiwan, you were you still were you releasing any music at that time? Or were you just like a club MC and still studying at the same time, right? At that time I was like, you know. Releasing music, not to say releasing music, I did put out like two songs on SoundCloud and that's it, you know. Mm. And it took me a lot of time to just write a song. Right. I'm still like not that good with pen, you know. Right. And also I'm learning a lot about, you know, the behind the scene thing on how to talk with brands and, you know, how to secure a collaboration with brands, how to, you know, all these like business side you know, things. Yeah. I actually learned a lot from Taiwan. Okay. That part. And like the music part I learned a lot from Malaysia so it's like then I just trying to like you know put it together wow <laughs> how how was the club scene I mean aside from the payment and bad payment bad paymasters um, how was the because I was a club MC here and you were a club MC yeah. MC in Taiwan oh. um, what 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 are the differences like Taiwan is much more fun, to be honest. They play trap and hip hop. Hmm. Yeah. So you got to work in a hip hop club, lah. Yeah. So basically, when I when I'm performing as an MC, yeah, as I think, why this song bops, you know? Right. Why right. Song right. Hard, why know? Why is this song getting the people to dance and yeah. rapping along? Yeah. All that, man. Yeah. And the club that I work in is not just like a pure hip hop club. It's okay. like, oh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's like hip hop and trap. And maybe like Friday, Saturday, when the people are a lot, it's like EDM. And, EDM, uh, right. So I get to, you know, I listen to a lot of music, yeah. like, you know, yeah. and every- You're and, forced to. Yeah, Even almost, though you don't like it, you have to still the, hype the and crowd. And the thing is, you know, like the DJs over there are also so fucking skilled, you know. I never thought I would hurt like DJ scratch, do or spin or loop shit, like the hip hop DJs way use, using it electronic music right and i get the chance to see a lot of you know red bull tree style champion like top 100 djs they all performing i was like yo what the fuck right like i get really open up your eyes open up my eyes in how they carry it themselves on stage and all that a lot lah. you mm. know you can learn a lot from just one performance you know mm. for every performance that i'm looking at i'm actually you know learning Mm. At that time, I don't really know how to enjoy a show. I was like, yo, fuck, how did this guy do this? How did that guy do that? Yo, mm. how the fuck did he scratch until people was like crazy? Like, yeah. that shit you wouldn't see it in Malaysia, man. Yeah. Then I was like, keep on learning, learning, learning. I even had the chance to, you know, talk to some of the producers and like all that. Mm. And yeah, it sort of opened up the way I look at music in, mm. in like multiple perspective. Because like, imagine the club was like having guest DJs, right. guest producer DJ for like two times or three times per month. Mm. Basically every month you need you get to know people, you know, like right, right. big yeah. profile DJs and all yeah. that. Like, that was one of the like who who were the one of the biggest artists have you met? Yo, to be honest, a lot, bro. You wanna know who who's the biggest artist I met? Justin Bieber. Yo, what <laughs> yo, I met LMFAO yo, before. I swear <laughs> to God, I shook his hands with Justin Bieber. Yo! Yo, that was so fire, dude. He came to- His hands soft. Uh, I cannot remember, bro. <laughs> I, dude, I was starstruck, bro. I was so starstruck. He and his entourage came through the back door. 
uh, already got la, some security telling me and some management level people telling me, hey, tonight maybe Justin Bieber coming, but they want to keep it low key. So, you know, just keep uh, them out, Shad. Just do your job. And then when they come, they come, you know, and then they actually came. <laughs> um, I met so many people through being a club MC. I met Russell Peters. Oh, the, the comedian. Uh. The comedian. Did you know he's a DJ? Dude, I what swear, dude, I swear to God, I'm mind blown, bro. Did you know? Did you know? Dude, Russell Peters, dude, the guy can scratch. <laughs> so I'm like, telling you, it's crazy. Yo, wow. I'm, I'm about to tell you guys a joke. Oh, like but, that, no, but uh. guess what? Guess what? He was he was very straight. Oh. And and it's normal for a lot of comedians, actually, they they're not as funny in real life because they try to be funny all for people yeah, yeah, a lot it's kind of like rappers like hey you rap ah. hey you freestyle ah. mm. dude can in there. <laughs> <laughs> fucking annoying as shit so also I I mean I never try to bother the artist lah. like I just let them do their thing but my DJ just let him he wanted to spin so he let, let him spin lah. so through being a club MC I got to meet quite a few big stars uh yeah, that's the Crazy. fun thing about it, lah. Yeah, fuck man, my Crazy, heart skipped, man. bro. When Justin Bieber walked past, I was like, fuck. And then his crew, uh, his boy, one of his guy, asked me to go over to the table, uh, to the sofa, lah. Uh -huh. Then he was pointing at me like, yo, come here. Then I was like, <laughs> you calling me, ah? Are you then still like, oh, shit. Act a bit chill, you know, like yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> like, yo, is it me? Alright, cool, cool. Then I went over. Then the guy was like, yo, um, can I can can our DJ spin? I was like, I can ask my DJ for you, but like, yo, can I grab a photo with Justin? Then he's like, no, no, no photos. Then after that, Justin Bieber called me like, yo, bro. And then I was like, yo, what's up? <laughs> Hand shook. And then I was like, dude, like, could you let my DJ spin? I was like, yo, for sure. No problem, bro. I got you. Let me let me just, you know, <laughs> arrange for you, bro. So that that's my my experience with Justin Bieber. That Whoa. was crazy, bro. That's, that's crazy, man. Yeah, but <sighs> like... Crazy man, like, but the first time I met a superstar is back in Penang. You know when the BN government started throwing like huge shows, and when PSY side came, yeah, 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 side. And like, there's also like I LMF AO came, yeah, like yeah. a lot, man. And that time, I was our college punya journalist. Oh, I get to go behind the stage. Shit. Oh shit! <laughs> How was it, dude? It was fun, man. Like. <laughs> It's crazy, man. Yeah. It's crazy to see all these super mega stars, how they just move around and just see them what drink water so short. Uh, you know, like, wow. But wow. actually, like, you know, that's the first time I was like, eh, hey, actually, uh, all these superstars, like, them normal as well. Uh, yeah. I mean, at know? the end of the day, like I said, uh, they just drink water and stuff like that. You're so, so shit, uh, you know. But did you have to hype the crowd with English or? Yeah, that's the thing. I need to have hype the crowd with English, uh, basically. Okay. Uh, but you know, just basic English, like, three, two, one, jump. I need put everybody put up. your hands up, right? Right. Yeah, something like it's that. It's so funny that I find this MC thing, right? Like sometimes I find it a bit weird to tell people that I'm a club MC because they don't get it. Because a lot of the DJs from the Western world, they don't need a DJ because the DJ hypes. Uh, uh, yeah. They don't need sorry, they don't yeah. need a hype man because the DJ is the hype man. They pick up the mic and then they just hype the crowd. Uh, but in Asia here, it's quite funny that you actually need. Yeah, that MC. one I also like a bit, a bit. It's you know. an, actually an occupation, which yeah. trust me, a lot of the DJs from um, the West they don't know. Like they're like, huh? You have club MC? Why do they need a club MC? And I thought like, mm, yeah, that's, that's true. Right. All the guests DJ can perform. Uh, like we don't need to work well. We just like chill and watch only. Right, right, right. Because they can handle the mic. But I don't know like Maybe, maybe, is an you know Asia culture thing. Right. Another person means like another. Power la, more right. power a bit la, maybe. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. Um, by the way, we we have a collab. Uh, we just did this for I think it was before Chinese New Year, the Huat Cap. Yep. And uh, man, that's crazy because you're loud and proud. The brand that you did the cap, you only have one design, right? Yeah. And then you stop. Yeah. How crazy it is for you right now that we actually did a cap together, bro. I that's just, the thing. I just connected it like a few days ago. That's the thing. I was like, yo, I actually get to did a cap and this time is what I really, really, really wanted. Yeah. Like to be able to bring out something that, that is, I'm confident to bring out right now. Right, that you're then, proud of. Yeah, because back then I was so insecure about everything I did, but I just still want to like try, you know, mm. that 
that is a good mistake. I perceive that as a good mistake. Without that mistake, I wouldn't be here as well. Yeah. So it's crazy. It's like a full circle, yeah, bro. It's like a full and circle. guess what, bro? The cap sold out already <laughs> today. Oh, just legit, sold out, sold out already. Sold out yeah. already. I, I saw you just posted like we still got two more. Actually, no more. Already. <laughs> yeah, Ivan took one, the last one. He's like, yo, last oh. piece ready. Oh, fuck, I need to get this. So gone. So thank you so much thank to you, thank you. everyone who copped the cap. Uh, that was nice. Um, I really like the underbrim. Yeah, the under, underbrim is really, really fire. fire <laughs> By the way, I still haven't passed you the pin, but we'll pass it to you later. Yo, nice. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy la, like, to be able to do a cap and this time it's like really based on everything so I'm so confident of, you know. I'm right. so proud of like this whole thing, this Banhua thing, like this China thing. Yeah. It's like, yo, when did, when when I got the cap from you, I was like, Poo. yeah, you know, that yeah. I almost like broke into tears. Uh. And that's why, <laughs> and that's why I feel like, uh, I think Steve Jobs said this, uh, you can only connect the dots backwards. Yeah, so everything you kind of, you kind of go through everything you have to go through to kind of get where you want to get. And then sometimes you just like that. I think I believe that is one of those moments where you feel like, wow, shit. This yeah, cat is exactly, so dope. Man. <laughs> <sighs> okay. But last yeah. time I was also quite lucky. The cat was so sold out also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sold out what? I think the ones that you yeah. gave me probably gave us what like 12 pieces sold out. So uh, so yeah. quite lucky. La. But this time to be able to have a cap with Cap City is like, yo, that cap I actually to be honest, uh, I didn't really wear. I just yeah. I kind of thought so. <laughs> I just put it into the box, display. you know, display only. Yeah. That's why I don't want to dirty the cap, you know. Right. You just wore it for the shoot, lah. <laughs> yeah, I just wore it for the shoot. I was like, yo, I ain't gonna wear this shit. I'm gonna put that nicely, you know. Right. Yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. That's dope. Anyway, uh, I wanna dive into um uh, this song that you have. Um, I really like the song. It's called Money and Face. Yeah, Money and Face. And, you know, when I was listening to that song, um, I remember all the things that we, we, we used to just chit chat about. Lah. And in that song, you said, even with all the money that you make, you can't save your face. Right? I it's mean, like in, in if, Mandarin... How, if like you earn the money through the way that you don't want to earn it, you know, it's like, when you count the money, it's also I like, feel a bit off, like, you know, because right. you are not proud of it. Right. You know, you are not like superior. I, I'm not saying like every hustle is good in its own way, but maybe just for me, I, I got this weird ass mindset that you I need to prove to people I can get paid with mm. this rap game, with this Chinese rap thing. And the way you want to do it. Yeah, that's the way I want to do it. So, But yeah. at the same time, you know, it hasn't been easy. You know, we've been always been talking about yo, this shit is hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I can only imagine because, I mean, I have my own struggles running the business, but mm. I'm not 100% in music. I'm really just doing music for fun. So um, I'm pretty sure the struggle is pretty much the same, you yeah, know? Thanks. Uh, like you always talk about how the media do not support, you know, indie artists, not just rappers. Um same with us, you know, we don't have a lot of media coverage as well. Yeah, facts, man. So I could relate to the song. And of course, we also mentioned about how some of these influences or KOLs or even rappers, you know, they, or artists, singers, whatever, like they somehow, they're willing to do what we don't believe in to get to where they want to get to. I you mean, know like, what I mean? If you and that, can finesse the way out of, out of it, like, it's good. But right, right now, if you... And that re goes back to the song. Mm. You can finesse the way you want to get it, but can it save your if face? If it doesn't work out, you are fucked, man. You can't really go back already. Right. And I don't know. La, I can, just do you remember your lyrics? Can you, like, recite back the, the chorus part? Because like, I believe... Not mm. Yeah. Not Mm. Uh, hey, fuck. <laughs> producer Franco. No, this one is produced Antoine. by Saucy. <laughs> oh, and oh, Saucy. Yeah, uh, but uh, along uh, the lines, uh, along the lines. Yeah, like you may have yen can zi ji, chen jing zun yan fang zai, eh, eh, chen jing zun yan fang ai qian shang, um, xiao xiao fang ai lian shang, uh, jie guo zi zuo, 
Because I used to be that person who was like, okay, la, I'll play into whatever the people called the game. Right. Like, my respect is based on like how much I earn. Mm. I perceive that. La, I perceive that. And I just like put on a smile for everybody. Like, if you want me to do whatever, I'll do it. I'll do it for the money, for the money. But at the end, you know, not really, not really good. Because if you don't have a, you know, if you that type of person, you will feel like it's a torture to do things that you don't oh, want to 100%. do. A hundred percent. Feel me? It's it's hard to explain to people because most people be like, "Yo, you are making bugs? Like what? What the? Why the fuck you complain about? You know?" Hmm. I was like, "Yo, it's not about making bugs. You know, it's about making bugs. Making money is just a statement only. Straight facts. The true thing that I want to bring out through that statement is like I'm making money through this rap music thing. Right? Y'all gotta acknowledge that." Straight. But if I just want to make money, it's easy. Like, I can simply just go back and start up a tuition center, bro. Straight. Straight. Me, or I just or go back we and can, MC. <laughs> or we can just simply, I mean, we can play the game, la, uh, right? Can, In the sense that, you know, like the difference between, I think, this other artist and like artists like you who are so true to the art, mm. right? Um, the difference is that we, we're all trying to get to the same destination. It's just that we're taking different routes. Yeah, For thanks. them, you know, they're willing to do pranks. They're willing to say something dumb and know that they can apologize later and then still get viral. You know, the, yeah, the point, thanks, man. they're trying to get viral, right? And sure, they get the numbers, they get the views, they get maybe some money, but back again, back to the song, Money and Face, that's why I like the song a lot. I think that has been kind of like what we've always been talking about, you mm. know, do you actually very hard man to get a million views, not hard. What do yeah. you take your, take off your pants, run around that more running around <laughs> without his pants. Dude, we get a million views, but like what, what are we really doing here at the end of the day? Yeah, Does thanks, the million man. views really, is it really going to make us happy or not? I mean, is like, that what we really trying to do now, man, you know, you somehow came into this mindset of like, you want to take something, or you want to leave something behind. Mm. You know, like, I guess like when we are like damn young, we was like, we want to get something, we want to get something, we got to get something. And some people just get lost in the sauce, man. Straight. You feel me? They just like get lost in the sauce and like, and it's, it's like living life is like zombie. Like. They just get, 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 get. But at a point, I feel like I want to leave something behind, you know? Straight. At oh. the end of the day, if you're just going to chase, chase, really, even after you have chased it, the next thing you're doing is still chasing. Yeah, facts, man. You know what I mean? You're not creating because now you're just saying, hey, I hit a million views. How can I hit the next million views? So I'm going to do something even more absurd, something yeah. crazier, say something wow, get the media coverage, get the people share. And I know you've always been, you know, someone that is very vocal about these things. And I appreciate, you know, you, you voicing out because I think being artist is one thing, being an artist with a voice is a different thing. Yeah, facts, man. Because, like, you know, there's also this one thing. Uh, another thing is, uh, if I'm not voicing it out, because, like, you know, how to put it in words? Uh, people, some people will perceive me as a hater for, you know, people achieve that. I yeah, can't achieve yeah, that. Yeah. That's why I'm hating. Yeah, but I feel for you. me, I was just like, nah, I'm a competitor. And a competitor, I can talk about you because I don't like the things that you do. I respect the hustle. As I said, I always respect the hustle. And if you can finesse your way out of the game, like kudos, uh, you know, like I respect the fuck out of it. And but, if you can find peace at the end of the day yeah. and you can sleep with peace and say, hey, I did something great today. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, like, but most of the people, they, they don't really, don't really change things, you know, they just right. stop. I mean, that I categorize as hater. Right. But if you actually commit to something, you yeah. want to change something, yeah. I'll respect you as a competitor, even though we're on a different path or even on a contradictory path. I'll see you as a competitor. I won't see you as, uh, like, you know, uh, this person is a bullshit, uh, whatever. Uh. Mm. I mean, low-key, I still feel that they are. <laughs> but even more, deep down in my heart, I respect the hustle and all that. Because, like, if that's the way you can make it, if I'm the right way, I should be the one made it better than you, you know. That's Straight. the thing that I that keep on pushing me, you know. Straight. Nobody in their right man would do like Hokkien trap music or Hokkien music <laughs> just to get views. Like, come on lah. Right. It's not about the views, bro. Yeah. A lot of people like don't see it, don't look at that. They thought, hey, making music, you're trying to 
trying to be famous. Uh. If I'm trying to be famous, I won't be making music. That's like the yeah. dumb, that's the most stupid stupid path you can take. Right. Uh. <laughs> I mean, again, being famous, sure, why not, right? Yeah. I mean, if we're good at what we're doing and we get famous out of it, why not? Again, like I said, destination is the same. We're yeah. all trying to get there. It's just the route. And how true are you to the art? You know, yeah, and I think you are someone who is very, is trying very hard to stay true to the art, yeah. you know, and, uh, and I know it's, it's very frustrating to see, you know, these artists or, or just influences just getting there, you know, by doing certain silly things or, you know, pulling up a, a, a stun, <laughs> basically. Yeah, I don't know, la, but. As you as you also know, like Malaysian Chinese music doesn't really have a scene anymore. Hmm. You feel me? And and it's all filled with these kind of things. Uh, hmm. and our younger generation or even people um, around our age hmm. also thinks that this is the way to do it, you know. Hmm. This is the way to do it. Okay, I'm gonna start to be a YouTuber. Why you want to be a YouTuber? <laughs> uh I don't know. <laughs> I just want to become famous. Right. You know, like the the mentality is a bit kind of fucked up, you know. If you want to get your art recognized by people, yeah, that's also called being famous. Uh. Yeah. But that's, you know, I respect the hustle and all that. But most of it, I want to be famous. How? Do you know? Why? Do you know? We follow what other people are doing. La. They do this what? Then we do this show so we can get what? Yeah. And this one, I, I got some interesting thing to say about it. You know when the whole rap of China thing blow up? Yeah. Suddenly, rappers everywhere. Yeah, straight up. And right now? Kind of died down, right? Still only me. You get what I mean? Because like, Facts. Malaysian Chinese, uh, I don't know why, uh, but it be like that, you know. Mm. People are so, I don't know why, you know. Mm. Like when the rap of China thing boom up, wow, suddenly I get these tracks from people that I don't know. Like they just trying to really? get attention, bro. Wow. These tracks and all that. Like, yo, fuck man, you can't even afford a good mic. Mm. And you, like some people like don't even get on beat, you know. It's like off beat and shit. And they's right. like, yo, I just want to throw this out. I just want to, this is not more. Mm. I don't even met the person. I don't even know the person. And suddenly I'm getting like a bunch of these tracks. Mm. A bunch people, of haters. Yeah. It's like crazy, mm. man. I was like, yo, I didn't expect this to happen, you know. But you, it's a good thing. That means like you're like the only target up there that people want to whack. Uh. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> la. <laughs> Trying to pull you down, uh, you but know. But at the end, it's a sad thing because like all these people that, that claim to be claim to be what they are not. Right. Actually, like look at now. Like anybody yeah. else? Yeah. Look at where where are they now, La Ben? Yeah. Nobody nobody's there anymore. Like I don't even have to reply to the distract. Cause like the distract <laughs> is so trash that I I don't even want to reply, you know. Straight. Cause you like, shouldn't, because you go you're gonna be wasting your time. I'm gonna be wasting my time. I'm gonna give them free fucking clout. And like, you know, there's nothing in for me, you know. There's not even if that's a good diss track, I might reply. So, you know, like right, people right, can, right. Like the crowd, the culture is like that, man. Yeah, and yeah, people yeah, like, yeah. Why not, right? Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is so it's shit, not even you know? worth it, lah. Yeah, so it's like damn weird, lah. Mm. Until now, you see, after the rap of China, I think blow out suddenly a tons of rappers, everybody's trying to be rappers and all that. And like... Has, has the rap in China slowed down as well? Yeah, I think confirm gonna slow yeah, down. La. La. The right. hype is there, then the hype is gonna. So, rap of China lasted how many seasons? I think At least. this year is probably the third season. Oh, this year's the third season. Uh, this year's the third eh? season. They skip a few years, is it? Because I, I thought rap of China has been around for quite some time. Nah, it's like quite new. Oh, still new? So, this year is like the third year. La. This year is like the third year only. So far, no more idea. Come on. I don't, don't know whether they still continue or not. La, but right. This right. year, they say they cannot do or some shit. La. I'm mm. also not sure about it so already. Because like... Mm. But that's how the media works, bro. Like, mm. at one point, Malaysia had so many dance competition. Remember? We oh, had like... Shit. Yeah, uh, showdown, then. Astro Battleground. Every shopping mall, there was like three dance competition going on. And everyone was a dancer. And then... As soon as, you know, showdown no longer continue, battleground stop after 10 years, if I'm not mistaken. And just no more dancers lah, got lah, but you know, much lesser lah compared to back then. Yeah, it's like that lah, I think it's, it's mm. like that lah. But I mean, you you and your, your crew and your collective, uh, is it safe to say Banhua is a collective? We are trying to make it 
as proper as a label right now. Okay. Because we, at the beginning, you told me it was more like a collective. Yeah, but right now, because all of us stay together in one one house. Okay. So basically, everybody wake up. Like We start creating. Every day was non-stop That's so creating. dope, bro. How, <laughs> how many of you right now? Uh, we got like five members staying together right now. And Franco is living really near. So he came by like almost every day. Right. But how big, how many members in, are there in Ban Huan right now? Eight, right? I think you told me. Was it six, seven, eight? Including like directors, beat makers, producers, and some behind the scenes guy. I think we got now like almost 20 people right now. Okay. That's a lot of people. Okay, what? Yeah, okay. Lah. I mean, at least you are... I think that's a dope thing to have, bro. To at least have like a, I mean, literally a house for everyone, <laughs> you know? But to house these creatives and really try to make something out of out of it, lah, you know? Yeah. Because like, you also know lah, the struggles of finding the right person to work with. Straight. That's like a real struggle because some <laughs> people don't have the visions. Some people don't have the work ethic. Uh, some people just cannot tahan, lah, you feel right. me? And like the person that I, all the person, or all the individual that I work with, luckily, like they all have the vision. Mm. They may be clueless about it, mm. but they damn tahan. Lah. You feel they me? learn. Lah. Uh, they They're willing tahan. to do it. And yeah, learn. facts, man. So like, so I guess that's like the quality that I want in people who I work with. Mm. You feel me? Because I, I know this person, this rapper that I collab with, gonna still be in the game after five years. Mm. Then, you know, rather than like work with people who are like, hey, play for fun. Then after two years, they don't, don't mm. do already or they gave up already. How long has Ban Hua been around for? Officially, I think one year plus. Mm. Yeah. Unofficially, probably two years. Yeah, like, can. unofficially two years. Well, it's still a bit too soon to speak. <laughs> you know, once we pass the three, four mark, year mark, then we'll see like who stays and, you know. Most of our member actually... Is there before Ban Hua even existed? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like started during Planta, so it's like maybe oh, mm. four years already. Mm. So has yeah. Planta been so long? Ah? Yeah, fuck man. Yeah. Shit, time flies, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Ban Hua, you're trying to make it as proper as a record label type? Yeah. Right. Record label. And everyone in the crew, they're fairly young right yeah to be honest crazy young man like we recently record recruited a new guy who was like, i think 17 years old <gasps> and his music was like yo what the fuck i was like oh damn that's dope which is good yeah which is good lah. yeah for me i i really think that you know sometimes you know you just have to admit that i'm a bit i'm a i'm not 17 18 anymore you know i right. can't really do that kind of music anymore right so you gotta admit that, you know, I'm not the person who's who's gonna sit on the chair, sit in the table and eating my own food one. Straight. You know, if people can came to the table, eat, man. Yeah. And like let's eat together and you know, yeah. get more food together. Yeah. Eating together is better than eating alone. Yeah, facts. And also young people are more creative, like, especially nowadays, like Straight. kids, 17, 18 year year old kids are was like their head is like super crazy one, you know. Straight. They just don't have the resources or the people to, you know. Experience uh, maybe. To talk yeah. with them or guide them. And Straight. I think we kind of, you know, in Ban Huat, everybody from different ages also got lah. There's right. people older than me also. So we kind of like. That's dope. Yeah, as an environment where old people <laughs> can learn from young people and young people can learn from old people. Yeah, straight. Straight. Yeah, so like that lah. That's dope. <laughs> That's why I got like Ivan. Ivan is young. Um, <laughs> and we are in the young business. Yeah, facts. We man. have to kind of admit that. And aging is something that is inevitable. You cannot avoid that. We, all of us are going to grow old, including Ivan one day. So eventually one day when Ivan grows older with me, and then we got to get another Ivan. Lah. Yeah. So get another <laughs> Ivan like so that. that then we know what's the trend and what people like and what people don't because yeah. I think a lot of people don't do that and they end up being disconnected. You know, they that's still... That's what happened with like the Chinese hip-hop scene back then, I feel like. Mm. That's what happened. Yeah, I, like, I think so too because at that, that time, the era, it was kind of just like that. Yeah. It was just stagnant <laughs> kind of. It did not have any breakthrough. Yeah, exactly. And that's why when I saw your, your music and your 
uh, that interview that you did with RTB, I was like, yo, this guy's got Oh, that one I did with Case East. Oh, uh, the Case, Case East. East. Shout outs to Case East, man. Oh. They shoot really good videos. But yeah, they long time didn't shoot already. I don't know what they're doing. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. Case East. <laughs> Gotta get your game back on, bro. <laughs> I really enjoyed their their interviews. There's the vibe is just very different. You're yeah, looking bad at the interview. I was like, yo, back then I was so bold, you know. Right. Right now I was like quite chill out already. Right. <laughs> I, I can kind of see your progress from your music also. Kind of <laughs> more chill and vibe. Cause I kind of deal with the reality that I'm go I'm getting older. I'm experiencing more stuff. Right. And I can't. Luckily for me, hip hop is a music that you can grow old with. Let's be honest. Like right. Jay Z still making music. Snoop Dogg still making music. Facts. Hip hop is a thing that you can grow old with, and you know, it's like them, them close la. Yeah. Now, then at one point of time, I was like, I should stop thinking about what music will hit the market. Hmm. I should start thinking about okay, at this phase of life, what do you want to say? What I want to say. I will put that out. It's like a memor memorabilia kind of thing. La. Straight. So when I look back, I was like, yo, 17 years old me did this song. Damn. Yeah. yeah. But if looking back, yo, 17 <laughs> until 50 years old, I still did this song. Oh shit, that's a bit fucked up. La. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to see my own progress as well. It's like hip hop is like a diary already. It's like a movie that probably ends, wound ends la, after right. I die also. It's going to be there for quite some yeah. time. Yeah. So I just want to leave my mark over there lah, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, for us, when we do certain things for so long, it becomes very tiring at the same time. And you sometimes run out of ideas. And the worst thing is, I see this happen to a lot of people is that they, they're not willing to change. They're not willing to try. Mm -hmm. Because now they're in this awkward awkward age where they feel like if I do this I, I look like I'm gonna try too hard nah fuck that man yeah. do whatever you want they, they just start don't to, try too hard <laughs> they, they start overthinking it lah basically yeah. you know but sometimes you just gotta try man you know a lot of people been telling me this you know? yo bro you was like you are like 27, 28 already bro you gotta start thinking about your future I was like yo what this is my future man facts <laughs> money <laughs> <laughs> money right there it's like that lah. I, I don't know why people always come to us or just people in general and they just go to people's life and like hey you don't need to think about your life man it's like you don't need to think about your life ah. <laughs> what are you thinking about my life for <laughs> you leave my life for me to think ah. it goes so much for what you know what I mean <laughs> it's like why are you life checking me bro you know <laughs> I think they just cannot accept that you know we are doing or maybe we are, to them we're having fun. So they yeah. feel like, hey, you're still having fun. Ah. You still go turn up. Ah. Don't you need to settle down, have a family, be a man? I can fucking settle down and turn up at the same time. Like you just said, yeah. Snoop is still making music. You know, Jay is still making music. So I don't know, man. I don't know what you guys are up to, bro. <laughs> a lot <sighs> of people didn't think that far. Lah. They thought that the culture, a culture is a culture for a reason. Mm. Because of people like us that, you know, keep, growing things and leaving things behind and people behind us will take up the things that we left and turn it into something else, you know. Mm. It's like a whole beautiful thing and people just didn't see that. People's like, hey, he rap. He's trying to be famous. I want you want to be like name we are. I was like <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Why do they even say that? Yo, a lot man. Like <laughs> it's I mean, it's kind of sad that people use name we to sort of be a benchmark, like, oh, you're trying to be named we. Like, no, bro, I'm really- Trying to be the best form of myself, man. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly, you know? It's really named we, like, <sighs> the face of hip hop mm. of, for the Chinese crowd. I think like crowd. pop rap, you could call it. But they actually think it's hip hop because yeah. he wears a beanie, he starts with a yo, yo, yo. <laughs> ah, facts, bro, I mean. Mm. Back then, he's quite hip hop, lah. Back yeah. then, lah. That yeah. was like crazy shit. Yo, his did, hustle, la. man, this is my personal opinion. I think his hustle is incredible, uh, bro. I mean, fucking smart, bro. It's yo, like, that like, I give yo. it to him, lah. You know, that is straight up 
hustle. <laughs> I mean, he put his life on the line, bro. Legit, bro. People were burning his photos in front of his <laughs> house, bro. Dude, I was like, yo, I... I question myself, am I willing to go that far? <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. You know, before I even try to hate him, I'm like, nah, man, I, I respect this guy. But um, to think of him as the hip hop face, I think that's just, people just need, I don't know, man, maybe we need another guy, you know, maybe you, you know, the next guy, you know? <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. A lot, like, I think basically it's about the, the people in Malaysia in general, mm. like the Chinese people in Malaysia in general. This, they need to experience more things, you know. Straight. I feel like as a Malaysian Chinese myself, a lot of people has been inside a box until Strange. until the day they die, man. But it's hard, right? Because um, a lot of this mindset comes from the parents yeah. and they're not willing to sort of rebel or go against. So that becomes very hard. Exactly, man. I, I feel like they follow the path of their parents that their parents said is because if it fails, they can blame their parents and they can get help from their parents. Mm. And that's exactly a lot how a lot of these people think, you know. Mm. But for me, parents won't be able to understand what you're going through, what's this generation thing. Let's straight. be straight up. But straight. the only thing they understand is fucking results. La. Straight. So it's just like, I'm making money through this. I can survive through this. Mm. Then they were like, I... Do your thing, man. As yeah. long as you can survive and you're happy with it, like, there's nothing much to ask for it already. Yeah. So, so I feel like, I don't know for other people, I feel like whatever the fuck you want to do, you just do. Straight. And take the, take the thing, la, the, you know, the disagreement from your parents as a motivation. Because yeah. as long as you get paid, yeah. your parents will be like, especially Chinese parents, they were like, okay, you get paid, okay. La. Yeah. Until you really prove yourself then they will believe it yeah so you gotta do it and prove it to them prove them wrong i mean that's what the whole <laughs> that's what the whole bam <laughs> one time bam, 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 bam. i mean that's just what the brand has been representing for you know yeah, um, facts. you just gotta prove it lah i mean nobody's gonna say yo i think being a rapper is a good idea bro <laughs> No, you will never hear that. Until right now, uh, if people came to me and say, you are inspired by you want to be a rapper, I was like, you chill. La. <laughs> <laughs> you better think about it. La, yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's why I hope this podcast get to reach more people and let them know what they're actually signing up for. Yeah, facts, man. I mean, aside from, we're not trying to scare you away either, but um, there is also a quote by J. Cole, this beauty in the struggle. There are many magical moments that I think Facts. working outside in the outside world will never get you. You know, when we make music, there's a different vibe. There's a different feeling. Um, just being creative in general, just for me, maybe I'm a creative, maybe they're not. I don't know, but it's a different vibe. Lah. I feel like there's one thing that people doesn't realize because like, they want things in life, mm. but they are going the way that people set from them but as you know through being creative and just like you know fuck your mentality and follow what you want yeah. it actually brings you to like crazy places and Straight. Ex crazy experience you know right you there's a lot of things that i that i never thought in my life i would experience at all you know Straight. and it's all just beauty in the struggle uh. i mean confirm struggle one ma this yeah Everything. Work nine to five also struggle. One also la. struggle. Ew, you struggle to, to, to get a weekend. You struggle on Monday, the worst. You know, same thing. You same know? thing. A lot of people didn't realize that. They thought that comfort is comfort. Nah. You being too comfort also them struggle. One damn sins, yeah. You know. They end up realizing that, shit, I'm actually in this job because I just don't want anybody to bug me and ask me what's next. You know, so I just have I'm an accountant, I'm this job, I'm doing this job to sort of just answer to people, you know, because let's, let's face the fact, right? It's hard sometimes for us to tell people, especially auntie and uncles, lah, <laughs> what we do for a living. Yeah. It's hard. So a lot of people cannot take that pressure where like, what am I going to say? I'm a YouTuber slash rapper slash IG influencer slash <laughs> they, they, they cannot but I think that's going to change that's going to change that's going to change because now like you say kids want to be YouTuber um, 
just do it for the right reason. I think that's fine. I think if my kid ever come to me one day and say, hey, dad, I want to be a YouTuber, whatever, yeah. that's hot at that time. I'm like, yo, go do it, you know, but for the right reasons. Yo, what if your, your daughter want to start an OnlyFans? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's gonna be a tough one. That's la. gonna be tough. One. But yeah. she says she's chasing a dream. Yo, I mean, <laughs> then then it is very important during that time. You have to think back when you tell your parents and your parents say no. How did you feel? Yeah. And then you just gotta empathize and try to wear the shoe and try to just understand, lah. Yeah. For me, I mean, if my daughter want to be on OnlyFans, ah. Uh, mm. I probably gonna tell her lah. As long as you think it's gonna <laughs> worth it lah, right? You know, everything is like deep down. If it's worth it, it's worth yeah. it lah. When you're old, are you are you gonna be happy? Yeah. You know, that's all that matters lah. You need to find that peace at mm. the end of the day. At the end of the day, it's just about that. Yeah, it's just about that. I posted the other day. Peace is the real bag. Oof. Ah, man. Anyway. Trust yourself lah. Yeah. Peace, peace is the real bag. Ching, ching, oh ching. shit, yeah. Money right there. Oh, <laughs> that one's hard. Um, all right, anyway. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show. But before we go, um, I got to ask you this one question. Since this is the Prove Them Wrong podcast, yeah. um, if there's one person, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I mean, through the sto- throughout the whole podcast, you guys know a lot of people doubted him. Um, if there's one person, I just want to know one person, you don't have to put out names. Uh, if there's one person who doubted you and there's, that person is the person that you want to prove him or her wrong, who's that? Is that maybe a teacher? It could be an uncle. It could be a friend, your ex-girlfriend. I just want to prove like the whole Malaysian Chinese music industry wrong. Wow, that's a lot of people, man. <laughs> uh, let's be honest. I uh, asked for one, he <laughs> gave the whole... What you got the whole Chinese entertainment, Malaysia Chinese entertainment wrong. Yeah. That's dope. Because yeah, oh, yeah, too old, and yeah, in putting out any music. Mm. That's the facts. So mm. why I, I have I'm sorry about I'm so disconnected with the the mainstream Chinese music scene. But what are they doing right now? I have no idea. Are they still doing like love songs and like uh, I think it's worse, gotten worse. Uh, there's no even much less song anymore. Huh? Then there's what do no they do? No song anymore, you know. No song? Uh? Yeah. What do they play? <laughs> I mean, On uh, like radio stations? YouTuber stuff. Uh. Oh. Uh, but what are those like funny, funny parody songs and stuff like that? Uh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is, um, do you guys know who is? Uh, I'm pretty sure you know lah, right? But the young ones, I don't know. Uh, Nicholas Z, Tating Fong. Oof. So I watched this interview and he said he was very fed up with uh, the Hong Kong movie scene mm. um, because there's no innovation. There's no creativity. Yeah. And he said this one thing that I was like, boom, money. You know what he said? Chung hai do shim hong gan na. You need to Dude. translate me to me a bit. So, you know, Sai <laughs> okay? Uh, COT, uh, Journey to oh, the, the West. Shim Hong is it? Yeah, Shim Hong. He said, Chong Hai Shim Hong Gan. Like, look at, the, look at America, look at Marvel. Uh, How many characters are they building and building and building and creating new stories? Uh, and I get, you I know get what, what I mean? Say. Yeah, like, and, and China and Hong Kong, they're still trying to do Journey to the West. Every Ch- um, okay, like not every Chinese New Year, but that's over exaggerating. But how many COT is there? How many Journey to the West? Yo, that's actually to- quite a lot. Yeah, yo, <laughs> that's fucking facts, bro. I was like, yo, that shit is fire, bro. Yeah, I think innovation is what we really need, you know, right. And it's just like, that's what I think I get so disconnected with the Chinese music scene because it's either emo songs, love songs, or love songs. No, I don't think there's any love songs anymore. That's even sadder. That's even sadder, bro. That's even sadder. Like, I'm sorry I say like love songs sucks, uh, but yeah, please at least come back. Uh, there's nothing there already, you know? <laughs> I mean, you can really literally sing. You don't have to rap. You can write, sing, rap about anything like you you will be surprised Yo, that people want to hear yeah actually 
actually uh, another thing uh, the songs that came out right now is like people who, who's trying to write the rap rap hype uh, okay trying to be a rappers and all that uh, mm. you know and a bit siasui to be honest you yeah. know yeah I, I don't know people maybe these people all these people doesn't realize this but you know when you do something it's gonna get internet is internet you know there's no like borders anymore you know mm. whatever you do rep, you represent your own country you represent your own community in general you right. basically represent malaysians and chinese you know right and if if that's what you put out you know yeah feel me uh, it's like it's like that lah. the frustration is like that lah. Right. but right now i was like you luckily banhuat is like going strong and right so we actually been able to you know let people know like yeah there is an alternative there's an alternative there yeah. is a group of people who are trying something different and i mean i'm the guy who does not give two fucks about the media i'm all about me us and the consumer so yeah but i still hope that the media could at least just look into different things man man aren't you guys bored of looking at the same thing and trying to do the same thing i mean like the media thing actually like it's not in my head anymore because i i used to be that person that i was like wait i'm chinese eh? like, why the fuck all the media that reach out to me is like either malay english right like, it's so not, weird right that so tells you something weird. that tells me something like and all these like you know you know who you guys are like you guys following my instagram and all that like all these like names in the industry like straight up pretend not to see or what eh? and yeah. like all the shit that you guys push out is like literally trash man mm. like let's be straight up lah. like when i came back people tell me that you need to be friends with this person you need to be friends with that person oh i hate that yeah shit. fuck man i don't do that man if you fuck with my thing we can be friends you know yeah and if you don't fuck with my things but you respect my hustle or you have things that you want to talk with me like we still can be friends man i don't straight. need to suck up to your straight to your shit boy and like a lot that man, was the old game bro that's the old game man. that's the old game fact is they people used to have to do those things to sort of get to where they want to get i you know I'm not putting names, but you know, there was a friend back then who told me, hey, you know, you need to know this guy, so you need to go to the gym. At that time, I don't go, I don't go to the gym yet. I was a skinny, very skinny boy. <laughs> I said, like, huh? Yeah, in order for you to play your music in the radio, you have to go to the gym and meet this guy and like be friends with him. I'm like, God damn. God damn. What the fuck? You feel like <laughs> you feel like prostitute, you know. Yo, but you know what? Ten years down the road, it's a lot here. a lot of these people are no longer relevant, man. Yeah. The game has changed. And these people, these higher up people, this media who thinks that they can still control, it's just, fact is you can't, bro. You can't stop what's really good because the internet's going to help us, you know? Luckily for us, man. Thank God Thank for internet. God, bro. <laughs> Thank God for internet, man. I mean, internet has like <sighs> yeah, pros and cons. Pros are, and cons, you know? But, but yeah. It's like that, lah. I feel you. So, okay, so what is that? one thing that probably gonna make you feel like i proved them wrong used to be double doing up. a tour in malaysia because i double there all these like astro artists they can't pull off a tour okay and like used to be that and i did like two tours already now Phew. i was hoping that you know i'm able to do something bigger and than just a malaysia tour hmm. maybe a china tour maybe like hmm. you know uh, Asia t- an Asia tour or some shit mm. like right now I'm not confident about it mm. but let's see how it goes uh. I mean, I like, mean we're always a work work in progress bro. yeah work in progress uh, all the time uh. so I, I guess like, let's see how it goes uh. and shout out to all the people that supported me since day one you know that's that's important yeah, because that's important, man. I think we can go on and on talking about you know who didn't support who doubted us but there are also a lot of people who believed in us and helped us along the way to get to help us get to where we want to get to and where we are today at the end it's about growing straight you feel me it's about growing you know like just if the person is still there since your day one supported you and everything and willing to grow with you like just just go do whatever the fuck you want you know with the person you know like things gonna change you know a lot a lot a lot of people in this scene or this industry 
they have this mindset of this, you know, use and ditch kind of way. You know, mm. I know you for a reason. Yeah. And probably I want to use your plug or whatever. Right. After I got that, I use you to know your other friends. Right. To jump around, jump around. I don't fuck with that shit. La. I straight out call call it out if I see this kind of people. La. They don't understand that the real recognize real. You know, exactly, like man. what what makes you think people can't smell it? Like for these people, <laughs> right? Like, dude, I can smell exactly, you from a man. fucking mile away, bro. You smelly, bro. Get the fuck away. You know. Uh, I mean, that's also probably I keep my circle very small. Uh, I'm always here. That's why I don't really go out. But you know, you are one of definitely one of the guys that I fuck with heavy. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, I'm so happy that you know you sort of reassured my memory that Tianwei is you. <laughs> the loud and proud is you. I'm sorry I did not connect the dots. I was kind of disconnected in between, but I'm so happy like, yo, that guy's, this guy's shit. Wow. <laughs> so dope. So dope. And seeing you just making moves and just growing Ban Hua and, and, you know, sort of recruiting this creative. Every time you guys come over, you guys tell me, yo, we're recruiting a new guy. This guy's super creative. This guy's super crazy. And, I mean, to whoever's watching, you guys um, have something to show, something to prove. Just shoot it over, man. Who knows? You know? I mean, yeah. it's not like a guarantee, like sign you, whatever, you become rich. La. No, la. we sign you and then you struggle together with, you know, us, <laughs> la, basically. That's the deal. La. After this, whatever, one hour plus show, if you guys still up for it, you know? Just do whatever the fuck you guys want. Life is so fucking short, man. So fucking short. So fucking sure. And if you manage to leave a mark in your life, even when you're old, you know, you can brag. La. Yeah. For Choice the brag rights, man. man. Just For the bragging rights. <laughs> to tell your grandkids, you know. Yo, I come back then. Oi. Go YouTube. That don't know. La. Wow, you don't know, man. You don't know. La. <laughs> and there's lucky if you get to the Akong Asia. If you yeah, yeah, ain't that lucky, at yeah. least there's something behind that yeah. people can remember you by. And I, I like don't want that. people to remember be my to remember be me by you know or oh, this guy pull some pranks <laughs> you feel me it's facts like, facts it's like yo. it's dope though because this is like kind of like the first time you, you're you talking a lot about legacy I think maybe it could be the age thing yeah but um, I guess in so. my age too I feel like I am trying my best to leave as much as I can behind I always tell Liang that you're gonna take you're gonna take over this whole thing bro I'm gonna go first peace out bro damn this shit is sad <laughs> right now <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, facts, man. Facts, man. It'd be like that. I, I feel like legacy, maybe uh, like if lucky enough, it, that thing is, what, whatever we did is huge enough to be a legacy. I mean, it is. Uh, but the fact that I get people messaging me about like, they fuck with my song, how the song changes them, the way they look at things Straight. and all that. That's amazing, bro. That's the feeling, the feeling yeah. is, you know, The crazy. fulfillment is crazy, bro. Yeah, and that you can't get from pretty much anywhere, la, to be honest. Like, Yeah. And, I mean, aside from whether doing it end up really making it big, I mean, big or not big is subjective, right? Yeah. Some people look at certain things big, some not. But anyway, for me, it's like, when I go, when I leave this place, I just want people to look back to these footages or whatever I put out, whether if it's clothes, music, shows, whatever, and said, God damn, he, he lived his life, you know? Yeah, facts, man. He lived it to his fullest, lah, you know? I don't want to be like, oh, he passed away, shit. shit man, he's still he, young, he still haven't done anything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. He, he said he wanted to do that, though, but he didn't. Fuck. Ah, never mind, lah. we That's burn for sad. him. Lah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot. Like, when, when, you know, when I listen to people say, you know, like, when people die, like, some of my friends, like, unfortunately, passed away, my Straight. college friends and all that. And when I see people like talking about like, oh, he wanted to do this, but he never really did it or even start doing it. I was like, yeah. You know, that's, I feel sad. <sighs> Not yeah. just for the situation, but also, you know. You, you reflect on your own life and say, fucking hell, that's not going to happen in my yeah. funeral. <laughs> that's not going to happen in my funeral. My funeral gonna got people who was like, yo, Datumo once fucked me. And I, you know, and, and a lot of people that you I once worked with Datumo, like crazy things. I, I, I want like people from different walks of life to be like Straight. telling Facts. different stories about me, you know. Facts. Then I can, that's you the know, goal, bro. That's the goal, man. I don't know about you, but I think about that a lot. You know, <laughs> I think about that a lot. I'm already planning already. But yeah, we're definitely riot, bro. 
<laughs> we put up a riot, a little mosh pit. Ah, <laughs> one time. <laughs> but yeah, all right, man. Um, I think we got to wrap this up. I think we can go on for like a few hours, but you know, the show's so new. I'm not <laughs> sure if they're, they're fucking with this uh, this long, but um, yeah, man, thank you so much. And um, yeah, anything, any last shout outs you want to make out to? Shout out to everybody who supported me since day one, la, like Straight. including Cap City, Negative, and also Niger, including like Against Lab, Sean Topui, and also Straight. JR from TNT Co and Dexon, like all these people who got my back, and also all of Banhua, especially like Franco out here. Franco. He's like the only person left still making music from the Chingin out days. Franco, you know? come into the shot for a while. <laughs> come on, come on into the shot. Actually, I wanted to get Franco together one, but the space is so <laughs> limited. You sit on top of uh, more Taipei. La. Yeah, that's Franco, guys. So, <laughs> yeah. Check out Franco's music. Uh, he produced really, really dope stuff. Uh, Saucy J as well. Saucy, thank you so much for the intro. Yo, the intro Saucy, anthem. And uh, yeah, man, it's a pleasure having you guys. We will see you guys in episode two. Oh, by the way, guys, the giveaway. Don't forget to comment, like, share, whatever, subscribe. We're picking another winner. And uh, yeah, man, I think that's about it. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, man. Thank you. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs>